Glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, the Lord encouraged me with a good word today, reminding me that He is the one who is faithful, the one upon whom we can lay our confidence, the one upon whom we can rest, the one in whom we can trust. So the Lord was reminding me about the story of Joseph, who interpreted the dream of the chief butler, who was going to be restored next to Pharaoh. You remember that the chief butler had been jailed alongside Joseph, and Joseph had foretold that the chief butler would be reinstated at Pharaoh's side. And so we go to Genesis chapter 40, starting at verse 9. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head, and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. And verse 14, and this is the verse I want to bring your attention to. But think on me, think on me, when it shall be well with thee, and shew kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. And so you see here Joseph putting his faith into a man, a man who is fallible, and a man who eventually forgot about him. When Joseph had specifically asked him, think on me, when it shall be well with thee. Think on me when it shall be well with thee. Having a mind to remember your brothers and sisters who are in affliction even when things are going well for you. And so Joseph relied on the chief butler, think on me, shew kindness, I pray thee unto me. Make mention of me unto Pharaoh. But men are fallible, men are not perfect, and this is why we have to rest on Christ and not on men, because they can disappoint us. And indeed, when we go to verse 23, still in Genesis chapter 40, we read, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Men will forget about you. And it is not so much that they have ill intentions toward you, but it is just their nature. They are not perfect. Only Christ is perfect. And only Christ will not forget about you. Now, ultimately, and this confirms that there was no ill intention on the part of the chief butler, but he forgot, but ultimately he will remember what Joseph had asked of him. Genesis chapter 41, we start at verse 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And we're talking about Pharaoh here. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day, 
And so now the chief butler remembers Joseph, who had asked him, remember me on that day. And so Pharaoh, looking for the interpretation of his dream about the seven years of abundance followed by seven years of famine, the chief butler is going to remind Pharaoh of how Joseph was able to accurately interpret the chief butler's dream. Verse 10, Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. You remember that the chief baker in his case, uh, he was hung, but the chief butler was reinstated. Verse 11, and we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. Verse 12, and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And so finally, Joseph is brought out because the chief butler remembered his wrong. If we go back to verse 9, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. And so we are weak. We are weak. That's why the Lord says there should be no consideration of man whose breath is in his nostrils. That's why the Lord says we should not make flesh our arm in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Do not make flesh your arm, but rather call upon the Lord in your day of distress and he will answer you. That is Psalm 50. Verse 15. And so we see, brothers and sisters, that the chief butler was comforted by Joseph's interpretation of the chief butler's dream. And Joseph had a request. Joseph asked the chief butler to remember him on that day and to make mention of him. But the chief butler forgot about Joseph. He eventually remembered but his imperfection was made manifest, the chief butler's imperfection, that is, in that when we rest upon men to have hope in men, we are ultimately disappointed. Whereas now, we're going to have a look at Christ and the confidence we can have in him. We go to Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Verse 42 again. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, 
remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. When things will be well with you in your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. That I have, quote unquote, done good unto you by encouraging you, defending you when you were being accused without a cause by the other malefactor. Remember me on that day and make mention of me to the Father. And Jesus said that he was even now confirming that it was a done deal and that this malefactor would be with him in paradise today. And so this man put his faith in Jesus for Jesus to remember him, for Jesus to make a recommendation of him to the Father. And if we go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, it is written, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. And so the malefactor took a stand for Jesus. He preached the righteousness of Jesus to the other malefactor, one person, and that was considered to be a worthy recommendation a worthy confession of Jesus Christ before men, even if one man. And so Jesus will now confess this malefactor who defended him before his father who is in heaven and confirms that it is a done deal. And Jesus is not like the chief butler to forget about his promise. And this is why we have to rely on him because in him all promises are yea and amen. And so there is a concept of remembrance according to men. And there is a concept of remembrance according to Jesus, according to Christ, according to God. And so lastly, just to illustrate that concept that God has of an infallible remembrance, we go to Malachi chapter 3, starting at verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son, that serveth him. And so I wanted to bring your attention to verse 16 to let you know that there is a book of remembrance written before the Lord for them that fear him because the Lord will make a difference between him who serveth him and the person who serves him not. And so there is a book of remembrance and it is infallible so where the butler, the chief butler, had forgotten about Joseph to recommend him, in terms of recommending him, once the chief butler had a better situation, having been reinstated in what is the image of the kingdom, being reinstated next to Pharaoh, he forgot to remember Joseph, who was still entangled, Whereas here, if we make an analogy with the malefactor at the cross, he also asked Jesus to recommend him to the Father. However, once Jesus came into his kingdom, he did not forget to make the recommendation. And we have this idea that men can be a forgetful hearer, whereas with Christ, there is a book of remembrance, and there is no room for error. There is only assurance and a guarantee that our name is in the book of life. Hallelujah. Amen. So that when Jesus comes into his kingdom, he forgets not to recommend to the Father those who confessed his name before men. Be it 
that it was an audience of just one man, the other malefactor. And so we go to Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. And so this is again the idea of the book of remembrance, the idea of the book of life, where the promises of the Lord are certain and sure, where he will not forget to recommend those who have commanded him before men, where he will not forget once he comes into his kingdom to honor those who have honored him. Because he will honor those who honor him. Amen. And so we go to Revelation chapter 20, just to remind ourselves of this beautiful promise that we have and guarantee that there is such a thing as a book of life and that there are people whose names are written in this book of life, people about whom it will not be forgotten to make a recommendation of these people to the Father because they honored the Lord. And so he will honor them because they commanded the Lord before men and they shall be commanded before the Father. And so Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so again, just to remind ourselves that there is the book of life. And where we have this assurance that the Lord has not forgotten about us. Just like in Malachi chapter 3, the Lord spoke of a book of remembrance. In Luke chapter 10, the Lord spoke of the book of life and our names being written in the book of life. And in Revelation chapter 20, we have a reminder again of the book of life and our names being written there. And so we connect this to the story of Joseph and how he interpreted the dream of the chief butler and encouraged the chief butler by way of his interpretation of the dream. And then the chief butler, once he was reinstated, once he was in a favorable position, in the kingdom, in the physical kingdom of Pharaoh, he forgot about Joseph. But then he remembered his faults. But there was imperfection in that process because Joseph had asked him to recommend him, to remember him first, and second, to recommend him. And so the chief butler faltered in that regard. But when it comes to Christ, the malefactor at the cross asked the same thing. Remember me, Jesus, and recommend me to the Father, essentially. When you will come into your kingdom, when things will have gotten well for you, remember me and make a recommendation of me. Though I be a malefactor, being crucified here, in my affliction, please remember me. And Jesus did not forget about him. In fact, Jesus gave him immediate confirmation that he could consider it done, that the malefactor could consider it a done deal, that it was already accomplished, that he would get that recommendation and that it would be a successful recommendation where he would be in paradise with him today. And so we got to compare the remembrance according to man and remembrance according to Christ, Jesus Christ, 
according to God, they're two different things. And this is why we put our faith in Jesus Christ. This is why we put our faith in the Almighty God. So be encouraged, brothers and sisters, even though daily you are going through affliction and you think that in your plight, Jesus may have forgotten about you. Not so. He remembers everything. He knows everything about your situation. And all the promises that he has made to you are guaranteed, certain, yea, and amen. Be fortified again today and keep pressing forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Alleluia. Amen.